In Matthew 5 and verse 4, we find these words from Jesus, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, I would venture to say that many individuals over the years have read this verse and then scratched their head and wondered how this statement could be true. How can one who is mourning be happy or blessed? Well, I believe the key to this truth that is taught in this verse is to understand two things. First, what does it mean to mourn? And second, what are we to mourn for? When we spend time to understand these two things, then this verse will have a much more clear meaning for us as children of God. First, we need to reflect upon what it means to mourn. The word mourn is used in a couple of ways in the Bible. However, the general meaning is very similar in all instances. There is more than one Greek word defined as to mourn or mourning. The difference, as we'll see in our next point, is understood by looking at the specific context of the scripture in view. And generally, the various Greek words all have the idea of lamenting or lamentation or extreme sorrow or even physical demonstrations of these feelings such as wailing or the beating of one's chest. If we've lived upon this earth for even a small number of years, we've experienced situations that have brought us or our loved ones to periods of intense mourning, to feelings of extreme sorrow. We've come to feel the need to weep or even to, to beat our chests. We've come to understand this. It's a part of this life and is one aspect that can help us as we look toward our heavenly home. Whereas Revelation 21 and verse 4 tells us, And death shall be no more, for neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain, for these former things have passed away. And understanding what it means to mourn, we now need to look specifically at what we are to be mourning as it relates to Matthew, excuse me, Matthew 5 and verse 4. Now, it may be easy to pass over this verse without taking the time to reflect upon the specific context of what Jesus is telling his disciples. It may be easy to just think of the idea of to mourn in a physical sense and pass it over without any deep consideration. But if, as we reflect upon the overall theme of Jesus' teaching in this section of Scripture, then we start to understand that the primary focus is spiritual. It's not physical. In each verse, Jesus is teaching spiritual principles. And while it is true that the Bible does reflect on mourning from a worldly sense, for example, it's better to go into the house of mourning than to go into the house of feasting, Ecclesiastes 7 and verse 2, in this present context that we're considering, Jesus isn't talking about a physical house of mourning. No, what he is considering here is our spiritual condition and how we are to view the sins that have separated us from God. In James 4, verses 7 through 9, James compares the ideas of submitting ourselves to God and drawing near to God with the idea of being wretched and mourning and weeping. Now, James isn't saying that we can draw near to God simply because we mourn over physical loss or pain. He's saying that we can draw closer to God when we mourn over our spiritual conditions. We, according to verse 10, we must humble ourselves before the Lord. To the one who desires to inherit eternal life, we must have sorrow when we recognize that we've sinned against God. We see Paul using this idea in a similar way in 1 Corinthians 5 and verse 2, when Paul addressing the fact that his body, of, uh, or the, the, the body of God's people there had put up with a very vile sin from one of their members, he says, and you're arrogant. Ought you not rather to mourn? Let him who has done this be removed from among you. So Paul is telling the church there in Corinth that they should be sad over the action that's led to where they currently were. Things that they had overlooked or had allowed to slip past them. Well, Paul himself had mourned his previous life when recounting how he had persecuted Christians and consented to their deaths. Paul was very sorrowful over this. So in Matthew 5 and verse 4, when Jesus says, Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Jesus says that those who have reached the point where they are truly sorry over their sinful state, they're going to do what's necessary in order to be comforted. We're going to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ through placing our faith in Jesus by repenting of our sins 
by confessing that faith and being baptized to have those sins washed away and to be placed into a right relationship with God. But we cannot get to that point until we mourn over our spiritual condition. Friends, we thank you for joining us for our program today and have a blessed day.